So let's get right back into the action as we head over to the stage to introduce to you our round five players that are right on the cusp there of being able to get to Top Cut tomorrow. And so we're going to go ahead and look at what these teams are as we take a look at Roberto Parente's team and we see hyper offense straight away. Yeah, that's pretty awesome to see as we've seen so much uh, of the crowd on versus Kyogre matchup so far on stream today. Now we're going to switch it up with Torkoal Venusaur. And then on Roberto's side, those are some of the fastest Pokemon you'll see in the entire format. See that double restricted pair right away here from Roberto with that Shadow Rider Calyrex next to that Kyogre, but taking a bit more of a supportive route here from Yosuke, looking at the Incineroar and of course that Porygon 2. Roberto going all in on turn one of game one of this round with his two restricted there, and it makes sense because Calyrex, Shadow Rider, and Kyogre are are, you know, two of the best special attackers you could probably build on any of your teams. The unfortunate part for Calyrex and Roberto is you're facing against a Porygon, who is a normal type, who is immune to the Astro Barrage, and an Incineroar, who is a dark type that resists and also can hit you back for four times super effective damage with any dark move that Incineroar is deciding here. So I don't know if this is the safest moment for Roberto to have his Calyrex Shadow Rider on the field. So that could give Yosuke a lot of areas to just pressure down the Kyogre and lower its HP to hinder that the water spout damage. Wow, look at that. It's going to be a Psy Shock just to be able to get the target uh, damage down onto the Porygon 2, and it's enough to be able to secure the knockout right away with the Water Spout, but also you can see that the Focus Sash there on the Incineroar will keep it around, but a great way to shut down the Porygon 2 so early. And that was Life Orb on the Kyogre there that let it do so much damage. Yeah, but are you happy with this trade? Taking the Darkest Lariat and knocking out the Shadow Rider Calyrex is going to be one Pokemon down a piece here for both Roberto and Yosuke, where they have to look at what is going to come out next. That's tough to call that an equivalent exchange as you traded your restricted Pokemon in Calyrex Shadow Rider for the Porygon 2. You did, however, bring the, the Incineroar down to its focus sash, so you kind of got like, you know, <laughs> a 1KO and then 99% of it, but that one pesky HP could be important later on for Yosuke because you can always pivot Incineroar out to save it for Intimidates later on or a fake out pressure later. Roberto, Roberto switching Landers into the slot. Haven't seen too much Landers in uh, uh, in the you know months coming up in in series 12 here so i wonder at the therian form this incineroar or, or the intimidate is not mattering too much into either of these pokemon so landers typically if we do see it it is a strong dynamax option on teams but roberto deciding not yet well i think it's really tough to keep that landers in in the face of an opposing kyogre and also kind of really like the idea that you get the psychic surge on the field because if you have any priority it's going to get a little crazy here as that indeedy also you see that psychic seed activated to be able to increase that special defense which is another great way to shore up some of this special attack damage that's going to be coming in from the kyogre across the way and now the venusaur as well that just pivoted in yeah and then because of that special defense boost like you're talking about if you're ever getting hit by single target special attacks it's going to be even more it's going to take longer to knock out that indeedy female so you can keep using follow me or whatever moves you want to go for with uh it's great access to many support moves there. Uh, it might not matter too much against Origin Pulses and Water Spouts, but because Kyogre Dynamax, now it has to use single target attacks. It absolutely does. Kyogre is going to lose a little bit of its HP there, but you can also see that Yosuke will go for the Max Geyser and Didi, though. Wow, Ooh. despite that special defense boost, is still going to take a huge chunk of damage. That's what we call calculated in the business because <laughs> Roberto knew his Ndidi at the plus one special defense would be able to survive the Max Geyser in the rain there. So that's a very smart play from them because obviously you don't want Landorus to eat a Max Geyser to the face like that. So you would rather the Ndidi, who really is just a supportive Pokemon. It's already at 12 HP. What would be really valuable for Roberto is to force Kyogre on Yosuke's side to waste its next turn of Dynamax because of Follow Me, making it so that it would be redirected towards that spot. Uh, and especially because the Venusaur is not attacking either. Now if Kyogre does attack, it has to go into the Indeedee. Yeah, look at that Follow Me. Right as you called it, it will be able to mitigate another turn of Max from this Kyogre, but Roberto's Kyogre going for a Water Spout here and just going to try to keep getting some amounts of damage onto the opposing Kyogre on Yosuke's side. It's still relatively healthy, but this Max Geyser as well, just going to get the knockout onto this Ndidi. And just like that, Roberto is down to his final two Pokemon here, that Landorus in the back. 
I'm just thinking here with uh, Kyogre often struggles from the four move slot syndrome of trying to fit all of its move coverage. You want Water Spell, you want Origin Pulse, Ice Beam, Protect, Thunder, Hyper Beam sometimes if you're if you're Assault Vested. So to go for the Water Spell in front of a Venusaur and a Dynamax Kyogre there makes me think possibly Roberto does not have access to the Thunder in the rain that would be super effective towards that Kyogre. So I, uh, it's going to take somebody else on Roberto's side and seeing a Landorus who doesn't want to face Kyogre and then a no Thunder Kyogre for Roberto as well would be proving very difficult as well as the Venusaur who's still around and then in the back Yosuke has that uh, 1 HP Incineroar to, to fake out as well. Like I really think Yosuke's put himself in a, a strong spot because Roberto hasn't, hasn't been able to get rid of that Kyogre yet. Yeah, I mean, that Kyogre is just finding a lot of value uh, on both sides, really. I mean, you see the Max Geysers coming out from Yosuke. Yes, I think the Ndidi was able to uh, provide a lot of defensive support, just being able to take away that targeting from its partner. But, you know, Yosuke still has some pivoting, and there you go. That Incineroar that was able to hang on from its Focus Sash, it gets to come in with that Intimidate to drop this Landorus' uh, attack. That's going to be big, especially when you're looking at a Dynamax here on Roberto's side that hasn't been used that, and it could be that Landorus. Yeah, Landorus Max Airstream is, you know, arguably the best Dynamax attack in the game, and that is what we're going to see the Dynamax Landorus in this spot. If it went into the 1 HP Incineroar, obviously it's going to be a KO, but importantly, it would give those speed buffs as well, so if it does come down to some weird Kyogre uh, mirror situations, it would be faster. We are not going to see that, though. Instead, there's more value in the Max Quake for the special defense boost. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, even though this Kyogre on Yosuke's side is incredibly bulky, it has been able to withstand a bunch of attacks at this point, but you also see the Origin Pulse. It's a double connect here. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully for Roberto, it's a double connect because that could have been uh, uh, very risky. I know Kyogre doesn't have max HP, but you would have been able to do the, the one damage you needed from Water Spell, but it works out does work out but whoa lander is right there super effective max geyser going to take it out immediately and despite those max quake boosts coming through it just wasn't enough to deal with the power that's coming out from yosuke's kyogre yeah it's tough as, as the landers you don't have any way super effectively to hit Ky yosuke's kyogre there and because of venusaur switching out if you went it if you wanted to max airstream into that slot you were just essentially sacrificing the incineroar into that slot so you still had Venusaur who can be pretty fast out here, and Venusaur definitely is okay facing down against the uh, against the the Kyogre there. So now it is down to Roberto and his Kyogre by himself, having to rely on a, an Orange Bolt if it even gets the chance if Venusaur doesn't knock it out first. Right. Well, it looks like it's just going to play it safe here. The Protect coming through first, maybe just trying to feel out a little bit about what is going to be happening from this Venusaur, but you can see the Frenzy Plant and the Origin Pulse both getting mitigated by the Protect here, and, the, and also the Rain is going to stop. Right, the Rain's going to stop. That actually hurts both of them there, but again, back to the, uh, the Max Quake turn. If that Max Airstream was there, Kyogre would be plus one speed and faster than both of Yosuke's Pokemon. It still might not matter because of the resisted attacks there, but that would have been a way to ensure you won the speed tie. Well, even if it is a speed tie, we don't really know how these Kyogre are trained just yet in a lot of these big, uh, turns previously. We have seen that Roberto's Kyogre has been able to get the attack off first, and so it's going to do the same thing. It does get the double connect with the Origin Pulse, and it is going to bring uh. both targets so low, but now you really are relying on misses here. The Frenzy Plant connecting, though, and it will be enough to knock out Roberto's Kyogre, so Yosuke takes game number one. Yep. Yosuke deciding to protect on the last turn of rain ensured he was able to win that game. So beautifully played, waiting to your outcomes. You don't want to risk anything, and it actually looked like because the Kyogre was faster, if the rain was still up, that would have been a double KO and a big comeback for Roberto. But let's go ahead and get into this game number two. Yosuke needs one more win to be able to get himself one step closer, and Roberto looking at a comeback here to be able to qualify for top 
hop cut. We will see the Ndidi to start things off with the Psychic Surge as well. But next to that Shadow Rider Calyrex, it's, it's kind of a big switch up here for Roberto. That's a huge switch up, especially because of the Psychic Terrain. If Roberto decides to click Psy Shock again, obviously instead of the Astro Barrage that will not hit the Gorgon, it's going to do even more damage from Psychic Terrain. So that could be the option. And it doesn't look like there's a... Uh, the, the, there is no Incineroar, right? That would be able to one-hit KO the Calyrex in response to its hit there. You can try to, you have to worry about Venusaur with sleep patterns, and you have to worry about the uh, the the age-old switch in my sunsetter for, for Venusaur <laughs> to get the chlorophyll boost, because that's obviously still, uh, you know, uh, still an option for Yosuke. Yeah, and I mean, the Venusaur is pretty free to kind of go for those sleep powders if it wants to, even if Roberto does decide to go for something like a follow me. You've already seen the reveal of the Psychic exceed so you know while we have seen something like safety goggles and DD used in the past pretty safe but you can also just go for the Gigantamax here okay so he did not switch meaning that it, we got to see if Roberto called it here because if you go into the if you side shock the Venusaur super effective it does not have sash because Incineroar is holding it that would knock it out yeah, it potentially could. I mean, it's going to be a lot of damage, and Psy Shock is one of those weird moves because despite it being a special attack, you actually use the target's defense here and the helping hand on top of this. Let's see exactly what this Calyrex decides to go for. It's expanding force. That's a massive amount of damage, and that is certainly one that can be boosted by the Psychic Terrain. Yeah, expanding force doing more damage while Psychic Terrain is on the field. Then you got the Psychic Terrain boost. Then you got the helping hand boost from Indeedy Female there, and and you got a Grim Nay boost as well. So a great turn for Roberto there, but Porygon wants to switch it up. Yeah, I mean, that Trick Room, I, I, I don't know if you, I think you take that trade though. Roberto has already neutralized a huge threat on Yosuke's side in that Dynamax. And so now if you can get through the turns of Trick Room, you might be able to, you know, withstand enough to go for a Dynamax of your own. Absolutely, you take that trade if you got rid of the Venusaur. We've seen so many times in VGC how Venusaur and Charizard as G-Max attackers kind of act as pseudo uh, restricted Pokemon with how strong they are. So he got rid of of his Dynamax without even getting an attack off. And you know, we probably should have suspected that Kyogre on Yosuke's side was trained a little slower since it does have the Porygon 2 and Cinero Torkoal on the team. You would likely think Trick Room would be much more of an option uh, available to Yosuke's side. So uh, now that you have Trick Room up for the next couple of turns, those slower Pokemon like the Porygon and this Kyogre are gonna be moving first. And if you click Water Spout, the uh, Follow Me cannot redirect that away. No, definitely can't redirect the spread moves but we're just gonna go ahead and see the Dynamax right away here from Roberto you know knowing that that Venusaur is out of the way you've caught the Shadow Rider Calyrex on the field and that might be enough sustain to be able to get you through these turns of Trick Room you know Shadow Rider Calyrex is not the bulkiest of Pokemon and you have seen that Yosuke's uh, Kyogre might be just a little bit bulky but the, the recover as well you're letting this Porygon 2 get set up a bit yeah, and the double HP might actually be uh, pretty important as well for the Calyrex to actually endure one of these hits from Kyogre. Water Spout doing less damage. Yeah, that is going to do a little bit less in the Max Mindstorm to be able to follow that up. And I think that Shadow Rider Calyrex is going to be super happy about that. That is now a second Grimnay boost that it is going to be able to collect. And Roberto just kind of quickly running away with things. This is what we expect out of a team that is labeled as Hyper Offense. Exactly. This is Hyper Offense. This is what Calyrex Shadow Rider does. He does, uh, Yosuke does reveal that Torkoal was the fourth Pokemon in this match. So he did have the option of doing the cheeky switch in Sun and go for Sleep Powder, but he decided not to. Calyrex, we always mention, can steamroll games the hardest thing is to get that first grimnay boost then the other then the second and the third and the fourth come by so much faster once you get that first one when you after you got the grimnay you don't need the uh indeedy to click follow or helping hand because you're already essentially getting a boost to it there so that let indeedy who is slower in trick room get that additional damage off onto yosuke's side of the field there so i just think a very well played you know last couple of turns for roberto well indeedy's gonna go for a protect as well and I think this is just one of the mind games that you can expect when you do have something like the Ndidi 
Is it going to go for a follow me? Is it going to protect? But we're also going to see the eruption now from the Torkoal, the foul play as well. This Calyrex will not get a chance to go for its third and final turn of Dynamax. And this is the problem when you've got two very slow Pokemon operating in Trick Room. And when you protect and then your opponent doesn't even target your protect and just knocks out the other, the other Pokemon, that's really disastrous there. Because if Roberto was able to get another attack on uh, off on that turn on that last turn of Dynamax would have been really important. Another smash, uh, you know, Mindstorm in Psychic Terrain with two Grimnay boosts would have been massive damage there. So now both of these trainer or uh, excuse me, Roberto has three Pokemon left compared to Yosuke's two, but there still are a couple of turns of Trick Room left. And uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, actually uh, it looks like it actually looks like Yosuke forfeited on that turn. So we're going to be moving down to uh, or moving on to the game three because Kyogre was going to wrap it up. Because yeah. To, what's Torko going to do to Kyogre? Yeah, it's tough in that position because, you know, you still can go for eruption, but it's a weird move, right? So, uh, you know, just to fill in maybe some of the viewers that are not as familiar with it, while it does have a fairly high base power, uh, the base power does decrease. It's, it's basically like Water Spout, but Fire type. It, but here, you know, Yosuke has the same leads as before. Roberto also... Yosuke knows what could happen if he allows this Shadow Rider Calyrex to get set up. The mind games, Rose, that these trainers are forcing on each other by going with the same lead as they did in game two. You're going to have to worry, will he switch in Torkoal? Will he protect? Will he follow me to redirect my sleep powder away? Something like that. Those are the, These issues that the players had to work through in game two are right back here in the forefront of game three again and it's so difficult because it's not necessarily like there is a correct play you have to try to evaluate all of your outcomes and if you're Roberto you have to do what is best for keeping Calyrex safe and that could be knocking out the Venusaur because it doesn't have Sash and there's no switch again nope oh but there's a protect this time around so is it going to be the Venusaur that is going to be the target no it's not it's going correctly it's going to be Porygon too that's going to take that damage but it does hang on and so the Trick Room is going to get set up anyway yeah, the Trick Room, now Venusaur doesn't want the sun up because it's naturally slower than the Calyrex without its chlorophyll boost there. So uh, the Porygon took a lot of damage for that Trick Room, but it will be able to recover and recover 50% of its HP that it lost there, bringing it back up over to half HP. And going for, you know, you tried as best as you could, single target size shock with Helping Hand in Psychic Terrain, and it wasn't enough. The other thing, after he recovers up, Porygon has foul play typically, which would be four times super effective into the Calyrex, which is something Roberto does not want to see. But, you know, I think there's also a really interesting speed interaction here as well, is that is Recover actually enough HP regeneration that Porygon 2 would actually be able to survive another Helping Hand Psy Shock? It, yeah, it doesn't It doesn't look like that, so that's a that's a good point. But if you're taking two turns to target on Pori to, Porygon 2 and never hitting Venusaur, that's a trade Yosuke is okay with. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see the Recover healing potentially come through first, but let's look at the Gigantamax on Yosuke's side. It is that Venusaur that is ready to go, but Ndidi also just going to go for a follow me here. Really not worried too much about maybe allowing this Porygon 2 to get set up. And of course, the foul play. Yeah, Porygon 2, I, like, that's huge that Ndidi was able to take that away. Look at how little that is going to do as the G-Max Vine Lash as well. Critical survival here for Ndidi, but what is Shadow Rider Calyrex going to do? And he he didn't recover, so he's still sitting at the crazy low HP. I, it doesn't even matter. Who cares about the Porygon 2 if you're just going to knock out the Gigantamax Venusaur target? Roberto right now making a huge adjustment in game number three, not going for the Dynamax right away, but still able to secure a knockout to get those Grimnay boosts. And then Didi, even with the G-Max Vine Lash for Digimon, so is going to hang on. I was going to say, that was a way for Yosuke to, to have a net neutral turn there if Vine Lash was able to secure the KO on Indeedy, but that did not work hanging on with just 6 HP there. You still do have Trick Room right now, so you can click uh, Recover if you wanted to, and then let, so let's say, the Torkoal, if you do have it in the back, has Eruption, has Trick Room up, and then you can uh, not care about Follow Me with a Spread Eruption. For sure. I mean, the Calyrex as well. I think anything that ends up coming in here for Yosuke has no opportunity to Dynamax anymore. It is going to hurt whatever it is that's going to be coming its way. And Kyogre, I mean, Trick Room is up, and so we've seen how the Kyogre speeds have interacted.
and because it has that spread type damage, and Didi definitely can't go for a follow me this turn to help support the Calyrex. Yeah, and yeah, the, you're right. The follow me does not matter against a Kyogre, and because it being on a Trick Room team, being trained slower, the Kyogre will be able to attack. Uh, you know, uh, in a higher priority here because of Trick Room, and the Calyrex is the slowest thing. This is not the position the Calyrex wants to be in. It's the slowest Pokemon on the field. It's not really used to that situation since it usually outspeeds everything under, uh, I would say under the sun, but typically outside of the sun because the source <laughs> faster in uh, thanks to Chlorophyll. Uh, yeah. Roberto still does have four Pokemon, though, at this point, so even if you do claim uh, K on the Ndidi and the Calyrex, you still have two Pokemon in the back to help. Yeah, but, you know, you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you're stuck with something and you don't have the ability to pivot later. But I think it's very important to preserve the Shadow Rider Calyrex so that you have something that is guaranteed faster for when the Trick Room ends. And knowing that the Foul Play would have been able to get the knockout onto that too, Kyogre, just going to take that like a champ with the expanding force as well. Porygon 2 is not going to get a chance to recover and it just goes down. Those were two prime recover turns potentially that Yosuke could have went for, but citing the foul play into what was the Calyrex was more important for him. Now, now revert, or excuse me, Yosuke is going to have to reveal his fourth Pokemon here, and if that was a reason that, oh, it's okay, my fourth Pokemon deals with the rest of Roberto's team much better than Porygon can, I'm okay with it getting knocked out, that would be uh, you know, an understandable decision, but it's the Torkoal who's neutering his own Kyogre, Kyogre's damage output because of the sun. Well, hopefully Kyogre has access to something else in the sun uh, that it can use besides a water type attack. But here's another massive adjustment here for Roberto. This is the first time in this series that we've seen this Regieleki come to the fold. Yeah, the, Red, the uh, Landers was there before and it just was too, un it was just too difficult of a spot when you're facing down the Kyogre. So Roberto deciding to switch with the Regieleki in game three. And as we were talking about in team preview, the Regieleki has a great matchup into Kyogre. There are no, there's no ground types to be seen. So you can click your, uh, your Thunderbolt or, or, you know, Rising Voltage, whatever electric attacks you have on Reggie Lecky, and it will do a lot of damage into that Kyogre slot. Uh, you still actually, Roberto has the Dynamax advantage in this matchup as the Venusaur was knocked down on the Yosuke's end, and Roberto was just clicking it now. Yeah, I mean, it, either of these, I think, make great options for the Dynamax, but I think even more important, seeing that Reggie Lecky Dynamax, it does get that boost to its HP pool to potentially ensure survival from a ground type attack from this Torkoal. Remains to be seen if that's going to be enough, though, as Kyogre also just going to go for a protect. Pretty good turn here for Roberto to kick things off for survivability. That eruption, it, it does have the sun boost, but uh, it's only hitting the, the Regilecki, who is very frail. Yeah, it's still going to hang on, though. And then the Kyogre Water Spout as well on top of that in the sun. That's not going to be too much damage. And even still, Regieleki hangs on so beautifully. He's able then to fire off a Max Lightning, knocking out the Kyogre. It changes the terrain as well. Sometimes we do see Yawn on Torkoal, but it will not be enough with Torkoal against three Pokemon on Roberto's side. Yeah, the Regieleki must be so proud right now. Usually, like, a light breeze would knock over Regieleki lucky but it actually takes the water spout because of the sun being up there so it feels like oh look how bulky i am i'll be able to endure that hit in the three to one advantage like you're uh like you're saying here this is uh, a great job by roberto in three games had three different strategies and uh to you know uh to pull it away with reggie lucky in the end saving it for game three not bringing it earlier was a great adjustment yeah and the fact that there's one more turn of the trick room as well I think you could see Kyogre go for something like a Protect just to guarantee that it's going to be able to stick around. I don't know if Regieleki is going to have the option to do that, but the Eruption as well. No Protect, no nothing. It's going to be a double knockout for this Torkoal, so you're really hoping that the Shadow Rider Calyrex in the back for Roberto is going to be enough now that the Trick Room has ended. And there's no normal types around anymore. Add perfectly timed for Roberto. Twisted Dimensions return to normal.
normal. Calyrex gets back into its comfort zone, being the super fast Pokemon that can be really strong. Single target Astro Barrage as well, right? You're only hitting the one there, so you do uh, you do the regular damage. There's no uh, lowering of your damage because it's not a spread attack anymore. And uh, once you do so much damage, then the eruption starts doing less, right? Because it's HP based. So uh, unless Torkoal has another way of hitting it, was uh, if, I know you could run like eruption heat wave in case you get low. But well, let's, let's see if the Astro Barrage takes it. Yep, Astro Barrage single target into the Torkoal of Yosuke, and it is a one hit knockout here. Roberto Parente winning this match 2-1 will secure a place in Top Cut tomorrow. Congratulations to Roberto. That was an incredible.